here's the agenda for today's uh, webinar. Uh, I will introduce a little bit about multi-core processors and some of the challenges with using multi-core software in ISO 262. And uh, Dr. Burnett will introduce the multi-core timing and analysis and go into some depth as to why some methodologies work and why some do not. And Christos will provide a uh, semi-live demonstration of showing some of the ways that you can go about analyzing multi-core. Um, so first I'd like to um, talk a little bit about Danla. Um, we were founded in 1984. Our mission was to provide um, embedded software development and testing services to the automotive industry. Since then, our suburban Detroit company expanded into a global company with over 400 engineers around the world. And our specialties include connected car technology, uh, telematics devices, cloud and app platforms. And we are also a tier supplier for electronics modules for climate control, lighting, shifting, head-up display, and some other boutique ECUs. And lastly, uh, we have the Danla Engineering Solutions Division. We provide services for software development, testing, and provide test automation software and physical test benches. Founded in 2004, the spinoff from the University of York and operating from its offices in the UK. Sorry, let me do something here. I'm having trouble driving. Uh, Rapid Systems uh, reduces the cost of verifying safety critical embedded software and the team of more than 50 employees and 40% PhD researchers are part of the Danlaw group. Their successful growth is based on incorporating bleeding edge intellectual properties into the Rapid line of V and V tools. The solutions help customers in prove their uh, software quality and deliver all the evidences needed to meet safety and certification objectives uh, and re they reduce verification costs. So in general, Danlon and Rapida provide complete solutions for developing embedded software and testing through all phases of design, simulation, prototyping, integration, and system validation. So first, we're going to present a little bit of technical background on software development and testing for multi-core processors. Um, the first question that, that probably comes up is, uh, why, why do you need to do this in the first place? So to answer it, we need to uh, go through a couple of fundamentals. Most everyone developing automotive software are familiar with single core processors and used on embedded control modules. Um, it's pretty simple. You've got a central CPU core that executes code. Uh, you have an I.O. bus to connect it to the outside world. You have caches that are connected to the core and, of course, memory. Um, the single core limits the speed at which increasingly complex application software can execute. Adding multiple cores, of course, will increase the output and throughput. One second. So multi-core processors are meant to uh, add core processors, of course, to handle concurrent workloads. Conceptually, the single processor core is extended by adding CPU cores local memory and private caches. And then other uh, resources such as the IO bus, more memory, and caches are added, extended, and shared. This allows the data to be split up and concurrently processed by the multiple cores and reassembled. Uh, of course, there's obvious applications for multi-core processors. Uh, they're used in transactional uh, data handling um, applications for banking, radar, image processing, and so on. Uh, for automotive embedded control modules, it also provides the functional partitioning and load balancing for security functions and functional safety. Multicore processors are the, are, are the essential bit for driver uh, assistance systems, autonomous vehicle, vehicle control functions, and of course, uh, V2X interactions. So demand for multicore processes 
processors, sorry, is driven by the benefits that it provides. So the obvious ones, of course, are lower power consumption, increased processing speeds, uh, increased processing and performance due to concurrent processing on the cores, uh, data security by providing firewalls and memory protection, and isolated critical safety functions, or ASILs, with respect to other functions. And of course, uh, since um, this is really the, the state-of-the-art technology that's being promoted across all the different uh, computing platforms, there's decreased pricing and increased availability as uh, more and more of these processors come into the market. So what are the steps in designing software application for multi-core processor? Seasoned engineers will tell you first to ensure that your sequential program is working on a single core processor and establishing this as your golden model. Um, that way you always have a reference to go back to. So um, in automotive, of course, many of the designs are legacy and they're being ported into uh, multi-core environments. Uh, this is especially for embedded control. Um, so when you do that, the first thing you have to do is figure out your architecture. And um, there's different architectures. There's peer-to-peer -peer, peer -peer architectures for decentralized solutions, uh, pipelined architecture to queue information from one computing process to the next. Or you might also have a, a master-slave architecture to ensure that control is synchronized across all the other uh, components. In addition, you need to consider if you're really uh, par parallelizing all of the different threads of execution, so they may be all doing the same kinds of jobs, and you might want to do pure parallel computation on the cores. Um, more significantly, you're probably going to be worried about the concurrency requirements, and this is a little bit different than parallelism. Uh, concurrency usually refers to tasks that look like they operate in parallel, but in fact they're uh, interleaved. Uh, the execution steps of each thread um, might be interleaved with others on uh, different cores. So there's basically a distribution of tasks between the different cores. They look like they're running concurrently, but in fact they're still subject to the tasking um, provided by the real-time operating system on the single core. So from there, the next part of the architecting is to uh, figure out what kind of partitioning uh, requirements you have or the isolation between the computing resources. Um, spatial isolation means that you have code or data of one partition. It can't affect the other partition. Temporal isolation means that one partition can't affect the ability of the other partitions to access a shared resource uh, like uh, memory or uh, a level three cache, an IO bus, that kind of thing. Um, partitioning, in effect, decides which core the code should execute in and what kind of resources are required. Assigning the tasks to the partitions is both a, an art and a science, and it's a Sometimes it's a bit more of an art, but at the end of the day, you need to figure out how to make these partitions work together. So what I'm trying to say is that the trade-offs between partitioning decisions, real-time performance needs, worst-case execution times, they should be balanced with each other. And uh, experienced software designers usually do a pretty good job of that, and they make common sense decisions on how to do that. But... Um, there's there's still some challenges, and it really comes to uh, when you talk about functional safety. Why is that? So in ISO 26262, there are uh, additional requirements on, on a multi-core system. So for those of you that are familiar with ASILs or automotive safety integrity levels, they're used to calculate the risk of a high